it's Scott Manley here and we are on our final portion of our journey to the surface of Tylo and back. The fuel tanker has reached the orbit and it is with a few minor manipulations of manoeuvre nodes that we can bring ourselves onto an intersect with the spacecraft which has been waiting patiently for several months, uh, 18 I think, maybe even longer. They've been with there a really long time and they're quite happy to see this getting there. I'm presuming it's also bringing fresh uh, deodorant as well for these uh, astronauts who've been cooped up in a tiny module for, well, several years now. But uh, yeah, we, we once we get the... Um once we get the encounter set up, we switch into target mode, we null velocities, and then we bring ourselves in closer. Once we get in close, we have to separate these two spacecraft because there is only one docking node on either ship. So we're gonna we're gonna basically take all the fuel out of this uh, drive stage and just leave it in orbit. Then, when we get our chance, we're gonna. Well, we're going to move that away and b move it far enough away that we can bring the fuel tanker in. Let us hope they do not collide in space because that would be rather uh, embarrassing. Um, so yeah, coming in, carefully sliding past the drive stage, which is currently inert with nothing but a small amount of maneuvering fuel. The, the lander has taken all the fuel and yet it is still not, it still does not have enough fuel to reach the surface. That is why this tanker is coming here. And it has the best part of a full load of fuel here for delivery. Fresh, hot, get them here. Docking happens eventually. <laughs> and we're ready to start refueling this thing and preparing for the epic landing. There we go, 1518 days. That's over four years these brave and very patient crew members have spent in space. Now, since we have this extra stage here with a nuclear engine attached, I decided it would be a good idea to use that to initiate my deorbit burn. It also has some RCS fuel on board, which I want to use as well. So we're going to burn up as much RCS fuel as we can, and then we're going to use the nuclear engine initially to initiate the deorbit. Now, the idea being that the uh, nuclear engine is vastly more efficient but we have to be careful because we're carrying extra mass. It does actually work out to be significantly better, but we also have this problem that we need to transfer the fuel back into the main spacecraft and then very carefully uh, redistribute it to the external tank so that we have a balanced spacecraft because trying to land an unbalanced spacecraft on a moon with a gravity as high as that of Tylo is... Well, it's suicide. <laughs> you know, let's let's not beat about the bush there. This, this thing will will spin out of control and crash and make a very large smear on the surface of this most di most difficult planet to land on. So uh, yeah, you see, we've although we've dropped our orbit now, our speed has picked back up, and now with thirty nine kilometers above the atmosphere, we fire up the main engine and we are going hot all the way down at full speed. There are, do not spare the horses, as they say. We need every ounce of power that this mainsail can deliver because if it can't slow us down in time, there are bad consequences. And you can see them all screaming at the prospect. I know they're not listening to me, uh, or maybe they are listening to me. Maybe I should uh, not be patched through to the crew at this time. That would be rather embarrassing for Mission Control to be sending my commentary straight there. <laughs> There, we've shaved off over half a kilometre per second. We've dropped 10 kilometres. Now, our lateral velocity is slowing down, but because of the angle we're burning at, our vertical velocity is picking up. I am totally eyeballing this, and uh, it is hard work. <laughs> 250, another 250 metres per second down. We're getting down to 1100, still burning directly retrograde, so still accelerating vertically. Uh, we're now 15, 16 kilometers up, down below one kilometers per second. And since we're in a uh, 20 degree retrograde burn, that means that our vertical velocity must be about 300 meters per second. Now getting closer, to, now down to 800 lateral. We can definitely kill our lateral velocity now. We're below 10 kilometers. We have no idea where the actual surface is because I'm not switching to the internal view because, um, 
Because I want to see that shadow coming up, seriously. <laughs> Down to half a kilometre per second, and now it we know that at least our vertical velocity must be about 200, 300 metres per second just by doing simple trigonometry here. So now, yes, we're now actually slowing our vertical velocity because you can see that we're, we're now burning up at 50, 60 degrees to the surface. Vertical speed coming down very quickly, down below 100 meters per second, 50, 60, time to let up a little on the thrust. And now we have the lights on, we are looking for that light patch and we're hoping that something will come up. There we go. That gives us an estimate, so bring the velocity down. Now, of course, every ounce of fuel is critical here because we need it to get back into orbit. 7.3 meters per second. You can see it, but a few meters away from the surface and engines off. 890 meters up was the landing site. We have landed after 100, 1,518 days and 19 hours. And now, of course, we can get out, stretch our legs after being cooped up in the spacecraft for so long. Of course, uh, these are all about the publicity. We need to keep public interest high, so let's pose for a nice publicity shot with a jewel in the background there. Looks rather nice, doesn't it? Rather tranquil. We can spend a few nights here, but uh, ultimately we have to start thinking about getting home. Uh, I don't have any experiments to do right now. Just landing was enough of an experiment. So, I didn't set these up with fuel lines correctly, I sent them all feeding inwards, so I manually transfer the fuel into two tanks so that we, we're going to be able to jettison those afterwards. We're going to modify the staging so that we can ditch the empty tanks as soon as we launch. But we have to be very careful to make sure that we match our fuel loads again because landing asymmetrically is bad and uh, taking off can be just as bad as well. We are very limited in our fuel supplies here. We do not want to be juggling Kerbals in orbit if we can avoid it. And there we go. I think we're getting pretty close. Now we just wait for the fuel ship or the drive stage to fly over. Again, it is empty. Everything that we need for a return trip is hopefully in this ship. But we don't actually know just yet because we're going to have to get up there. There we go. Ditch those tanks. And now aim to get into orbit as quickly as possible. Now there's no atmosphere, so we cur we arc over right away. We have a very high thrust to weight ratio, so we can thrust down as low as 20, 30 degrees and be pretty sure that we're not gonna fall back into the clutch of, the, of Tylo's strong gravity. Its gravity may be strong, but this mainsail is stronger. I trust in rocket power. So up. Oh, Look, almost one kilometer per second already. Is that not ridiculous? This thing is burning. This is accelerating so fast, but it is also burning fuel at a ridiculous rate. We're trying to keep our trajectory nice and low because that is the most efficient way to do these things. We want to carry as much fuel up as possible because there is nothing in this return ship. And if we don't have enough fuel in the return ship, when we get to the return ship, then we might have to call back for more fuel. And... Well, we'll find that out. Main engine is cut out while we cruise to altitude. There we go, 320. That is probably enough. However, we need to circularize our orbit. And you can see that as we cruise up to our 100 kilometer altitude, we are losing energy. We're going to have to replenish that energy by burning fuel. Oh, look at the lights flying around that. Very nice, casting their light across the dark surface of Dilo until they fall back and are demolished by its cruel gravitational force. There we go, burning fuel very quickly and stopped. And now we're up to 213. Um, okay, I suspect that may be too little fuel to return. And so if I was smart, at this point I would get on the horn with Mission Control and say, Hey, uh, could you send another one of those fuel trucks up? Anyway, we we're coming in for our final rendezvous. You can see the Tylo drive unit is sitting just below us. We're using RCS to close the gap as carefully as possible. We can afford to waste monopropellant here because monopropellant, there is only so much room in the Tylo drive unit, I guess. And without it, well, I think we've maximized its fuel, but maybe I'm wrong here. Regardless, 
we can what we want to do is use the monopropellant because the regular liquid fuel is far more valuable when it's sitting in the tanks of this Tylo drive system. There we go, just bringing it in. We're gonna we've got it lined up and pointing the right direction. Now we've got it turning around, switched it to chase camera mode. You see me pointing at the 180 coordinate and we shift laterally trying to get the pink marker lined up with that and then my velocity vector. If we get all those three things lined up, we will dock. Ta-da! And so yes, Matt transfer everything across. Once we transferred it, we can ditch the main fuel tank and leave all, the only thing we need to leave behind is the crew capsule. The rest of the ship is going to be, is going to have enough, let's say. Okay, and are we here yet? There we go. <laughs> and so yes, I decided to send forth for another fuel tank. And uh, instead of watching that whole thing in detail, here it is at 64 times normal speed. Oh joy. The joys of spinning around the galaxy at a one minute compressed into one second. There we go, catching up with Jewel. We do a double transfer here because I couldn't be bothered waiting for the, the alignment to come up. I'm absolutely terrible because I can't be bothered waiting. Getting the alignment correctly, doing another aero break, zippity zip. Getting a rendezvous, messing around with that, maneuver nodes, more maneuver nodes. Getting her inclination correction. We have an encounter, and we fix our encounter so that we arrive in the right direction. There we are going in the right direction. So we come in, we burn to correct very quickly. Correct our inclination with respect to the target and bringing our orbit down. There we finally get an encounter. There we go, using the main engine to bring ourselves in close really quickly. Down to about a few hundred meters, and now we need to find a place to dock. So we have to jettison this capsule, leaving the crew stranded in nothing but a capsule a long way from home. Don't worry, we promise we will pick you up. We're not that evil. I know you have nothing to do now. You don't even have any power supplies, but well, we are professionals here. And so a quick docking maneuver later, we transfer fuel into this thing that takes but a moment the we again yes we I guess we don't have much fuel in this fuel tank left but we have more than enough and we also have the little tank underneath that will have a fuel load so we're gonna have more than enough we could probably take this around to other planets in fact if I hadn't ditched the drive stage maybe we could have landed on Val but honestly I think these guys have been spending enough time in space and if I'm going to do a grand tour, I'm going to do it a little more professionally. <laughs> I think this is really just showing that with docking, providing your patient and you leave your spacecraft in orbit, then you can rescue any mission. The real danger now is getting stranded on the surface of a planet because docking something on a planet is hard. And so we now begin our homeward journey with more than enough fuel. We, uh, of course, what we do is we drop down to uh, a, a tight dual periaps, and from there we then burn outwards. There's still a small amount of wobbling here because the torque of the capsule is really high. Once we escape Jules sphere of influence, we can adjust our orbit to bring ourselves onto an encounter with planet Kerbin, and it takes but a little amount of time. We then bring our periaps down for final rendezvous. Not going to do this too steeply. We're not aiming for Kerbal Space Port because that could lead to us coming down far too steeply. We had plenty of fuel. We could even have killed our velocity. But there we go. Upper atmosphere. Screaming through it and burning and casting a fire across the sky. Deploying our chutes slowing down to a bit a few hundred meters per second and finally after 2984 days we touch down and enjoy the sunset on Kerbin once more and so with that I bid you farewell I'm Scott Manley fly safe